Sally. Hello. Sally, for those that don't know you, can you please introduce yourself? Oh, so my name's Sally. I've been a dance studio owner for over 20 years. So first started teaching probably closer to 30 years ago in Victoria from Melbourne originally. So I had my studio in Caulfield South in Melbourne, as well as in Gippsland in Sale and Bensdale. I started off with a little school, like maybe 50 kids out of a guides hall in Warfield and then grew that to a monster, bought an additional school in Gippsland and then ended up with 1,200 students, three campuses, 30 staff, nuts, but was at the point where I was working seven days a week, right? As yeah. and studio owners, we're doing everything all the time and that's back before social media was just starting to become a thing and mobile phones were just starting to be in everyone's hands. And it was well before business coaches or dance studio software or, or you're still doing the newspaper ads at the start of every year. Oh, and that, box that's a stuff. lot. So hang on. So your towns that you were in, the cities that you were in, were they regional or were they metro? Both. So metro, Caulfield South. And then I'm from Gippsland, which is... Okay. Gippsland, so Sale and Bensdale, it's about three hours east of Melbourne Drive. Uh, I'm from that kind of area. So when that school came up for sale, I had the potential of that area. Uh, but it also meant that I was travelling every week between the studio. Oh, so that's rough. <laughs> but of my own choosing. And at the time, I wouldn't have had it any other way. It's yeah. dance studio owners would tend to be all in. So. I was about to say, we're a crazy bunch that go, yeah. oh, we're so busy. And then it's like, we would need a break and then we'd still work seven days a week. We take on another project. You know? Or another studio like yeah. I did. I know yes. so many studio owners lately that have yes. bought studios and I'm like, you're the one that says you're so busy. Why have you picked up? Why have you bought another studio? Oh, just. It's, it's just happening a fun. lot at the moment. And there are a lot of, I would say, younger and entrepreneurial studio owners who are picking up studios from either people who have been in the game a really long time, don't have a legacy plan and are ready to get out. So yeah, have, I, have, I have noticed that as well. And there's a lot of that going on, which I think is really cool because it means we're not losing studios. Kids are not yes. losing that. That's um, actually a very good point. I've never thought of it like that because, yeah. like you said, when you have a studio, you do need to have an exit plan as well. And If you're looking to grow, there are a lot of opportunities right now to pick up a studio for cheap. And even if it has been dwindling, there is already infrastructure in place for you to go, I can put the energy behind this to get this back up. And often that's starting with even a studio that's declining is better than starting from nothing. Do you still have a studio? I'm just going to go back a step because when I, my first studio I actually bought, I didn't start it from scratch. I've oh, done no both. Yeah, yes. but the first studio I bought, I paid, and this is fun fact, 1999, I bought this studio for three and a half thousand dollars. So we sold the country school separately and then I sold the metro school. And then I moved to Queensland, outback regional Queensland, so Mount Isa. My yes, as you um, do. And I started a school there from scratch, which is much easier, I would say, in a regional area because you have a really? much better community petition. So where I started it, there was only one other school for 25 years. I was doing things the way they'd always done it. So there was actually a really great opportunity for someone to come in with fresh ideas, fresh systems. We were still in an era with that dance studio where people had to line up on a Saturday morning to book in. <laughs> Whereas, what? yeah, I came in and went, well, let's do it all online. <laughs> so there was opportunities there, right? I sold that and then went to Queensland, then closed that actually because of personal life relationships, all sorts of stuff, moved to um, Sydney and worked with a dance costume company. I don't know if you remember Costume Box Recital. That was oh, open. that rings a bell. Yeah, They're not only, around anymore, are they? Nah, they're only open for a couple of years. So I kind of that contract on when they were just starting. So I arrived and they had a price list and a, an agreement with the um, Artstone in America. Yeah. And so I started it, got it going, grew it very quickly within a couple of years. And that's where probably I got my first taste of social media and marketing yeah. on a like, digital space and then went back to Queensland, <laughs> back to Mount Isa. Yeah. And started again and opened another dance studio. <laughs> so I've been back and forth and done it all. But it's been an interesting journey, that's for sure. Crazy. So you yeah. sort of have a studio now. So back to where we are now. Yep. COVID came along and my dance studio in Mount Isa was big. It had grown really quickly in three years. Again, I was back to working all the time, teaching yep. all the time. And then when COVID came along, I had the opportunity to say to myself, do I actually want to keep doing this? I love this industry. 
But I'd won business awards for like marketing and innovation and all this sort of stuff. And I was like, that's actually my jam. That's the stuff I love. Mm. And I had friends coming to me, asking me to help them with their businesses, not necessarily dance businesses, but businesses in the area with social media and marketing. And I went, you know what? This is what I love to do. Let's switch it up and move over. And then a lady who was teaching with me at that school said, I actually want to bring back what we were doing because I loved it. My kids loved it. I keep hearing from people how they miss it. And I said, all right, you know what? Let's do it together. But I said to her, at some point, I'm going to be leaving. I know I'm going to be moving away. So she was like, yeah, no worries. That's fine. So I ended up leaving way sooner than expected. So after one term of us reopening, oh, I said, no. ah, yeah, so I'm going. <laughs> In inevitably, because I was teaching a lot, I left. We lost a heap of students because they were there, because yeah. they knew me. But over that year, I said to her, you know what, I'll stay in the business doing your marketing. And then, so this was last year. So I was staying in the business doing your marketing. So we kind of kept it going. And then I put all the pieces in place last year that I knew wouldn't have necessarily an immediate impact, but that would help coming into this year. And she's tripled the school this year. So wow. 50 kids last year, she's got 150 now, which is so nice. So I'm still part of that business in terms of I'm still doing the marketing, which I love because all the things I teach and help clients with, I'm also testing out myself. So I kind of love that I have that investment in my own studio as well. So that sort of brings me to what you actually do. Marketing and especially social media for dance studios is where I focus on now. So when I started marketing, I kind of for everyone. I was like, yeah, I want to help. I'm here and did it for small businesses in general and then realized my connection to the dance industry, my experience as a studio owner, my experience in wholesale costumes. I had a retail store in dance for a while. I'm like, my experience in this industry is going to put me in a place where I can help people in this industry in a way that other marketers can't. I had hired marketing people before to help me with my dance studio, but just found that they just didn't get it. They, they didn't understand the seasonality of it. They didn't understand the very specific nuances of, of running a dance school and the typical strategies and tactics that would work for another business just don't work for dance school. I jumped in then full on. So I have all sorts of services now. Like I understand that dance studios are all in different seasons of business. So some people, what some people can afford and what some people need, very different to what other people can afford and what other people need, right? I'm all about what can I do to help dance studio owners no matter what season of their business they're in. So if we had to dot point it, you would obviously do Instagram, Facebook ads. You do copyright? Yes, I do copywriting. So I didn't, I have like two pillars, either I a do it yourself and I'll help you or I have a done for you version. I have like a, a membership where people pay monthly and then all the resources, training, coaching calls, kind of typical setups of the way memberships are run. That for dance studios, that's quite affordable. It's like 47 a month. And then oh, I wow. have a done for you program where I do everything, where all the back end set up, I make sure your Google business profile is optimized I make sure keywords are in your content. I edit all your visuals, I schedule it all, post it all, copywriting, paid ads, the whole lot. Obviously that's priced accordingly. But again, knowing the dance studio industry, there isn't one advice that's going to work for everyone in terms yeah. of who their target audience is, what they're offering and what works for one won't work for the other. So no. whilst I can say, listen, this is where I think you should start or this is what I think you should try, what I think you should test, what's going to work is just very individual. If I was to ask you, what do you think the most common pain point people have? There's probably like a top three, just the time to do it. And what I find there's, again, potentially controversial opinion, but Love it. <laughs> there's doing social and then there's really utilising social media. So mm. I find a lot of studios are doing social media in terms of their postings fairly consistently. Um, they're happy with what their feed looks like. But then when I say, well, what's the goal? Who are you pasting this for? Because you're actually not yeah. posting it for yourself. How are you moving people from your content into your business? And then we start getting into strategy. So what I mostly find with dance studios is they start doing social media and then they suddenly realize, oh, actually, I need to move my strategy back, <laughs> back over here. Make that why. I post a really big thing that's happening in social media is search. Yeah. yeah. Once upon a time, Google's where you found a local <laughs> business. That's where you typed in dance classes, Geraldton. Whereas now more and more people are doing that on Facebook and Instagram. So making sure your content has those keywords in it. So people can find your business first. 
is actually super important, but a lot of studios just aren't doing it. So they'll put up a post, amazing, beautiful post of their kids and say, these kids nailed it tonight in their caption. And I look at that and go, there's not one keyword in there. No one is searching. Mm. My kids nailed it tonight. So, but if they just. What did they nail? Like did they splits, pirouette, jumps? Well, and again, if that content is for them, they they get, Mm. but it's not for them, right? It's for their target audience. It's for potential customers. Yeah. So even if it said, these kids nailed it tonight in our ACTS classes at Sally's Dance Academy in Geraldton, which was a little bit clumsy, but at the very least you've got keywords in there and find you. So yeah. <laughs> it's just making sure you're thinking about what is the point of social media. That's what I really like to steer people when they come to me. So they'll come to me and say, I just don't have the time. And I said, well, yeah. if this is a marketing channel and you actually want to use it to get people into your business, you can't afford not to do it correct. You're already spending time on it. So let's spend time. That's true. <laughs> let's spend time getting it to work for you, you know. Um, and then from there, paid ads tends to be the next big pain point for people. Mm. And again, like we talked about before, it just changes so often. And whilst people who do it all the time can claim that it's easy or simple, I, there's now so many options. And especially since they've incorporated AI. Yeah, that's a game changer. But what they call advantage plus, what I'm finding through testing with my clients, it's not actually an advantage. So I've got a client who I was running ads for and testing advantage plus in ads over here in Western Australia. So I'm like, yeah, no, I don't trust this AI is actually working for it. No, it can be wrong. You don't, you don't always trust AI. And whilst part of their AI, I really like. So there's um, the option for dynamic creative where you can put in, you know, images, videos, and it best. That Ooh. kind of is working really nicely. It's getting really good. Yeah. Results. But the audience targeting AI, not yet. But it just okay. results yet. Not to say it won't because it's obviously getting better and better all the time. On to ADF. One, are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm actually pumped. You know, I've never been before. It's actually Kelly Groves, who's a beautiful friend of mine. She's so devoted to her craft, like so lovely. She's down to earth. She yeah. loves what she does. She knows her staff. I'm like, yeah, she's great. She's so, so authentic. Yeah, amazing, right? Which, And I have a big passion for people who don't need to pretend to be anything other than who they are. So um, I really gel with those people. So, yeah, Kelly and I are getting together for ADF. Her jam is really strategy. Oh, yeah. And so we're going to bring together the social media from her perspective, strategy, from my perspective, implementation, implementation and paid ads. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And so really work together because I was saying to her, what I find is I go into studios with this done for you package, but they don't actually have the strategy in place. And there's almost like a, a piece of the puzzle missing. She says, I set up the strategy, but then I kind of need someone to help them roll oh. with them after that. So like, we're like, oh, well, perfect marriage. Let's, let's make this happen. <laughs> So we're going to work together to really offer something special for dance studio owners and help as much as we can at ADF. And then also my beautiful friend, Jen Dalton, I'm doing some work with as well. We're looking at putting together some AI solutions for dance studio owners. Yeah. So I'm pumped about the things that we can help studio owners with at ADF. I'm really looking forward to it. I was in your shoes last year. It was my first year last year going and yeah. people are like, they were always saying like, you need to go to ADF, you need to go to the teacher's teacher's room, which now of course renamed to the teacher's VIP lounge, just to yes. be a little bit fancier because yes. we need to be a little bit fancy. But I was not prepared for, like it is, it is massive. Even just the teacher's room made so many connections and lifelong friendships that yeah. it was just, it was no doubt, obviously going back again this year making the connections is the thing I love the most so I'm not a fan of standing on a stage and talking at people I feel like you kind of lose any kind of help for anyone in that situation and what I love about the format at ADF is that you actually get to talk with people and therefore yes help people which is kind of the point I'm excited yeah Yeah. I think the format's going to be great and actually useful dance studio owners and teachers yes and it's important as well that it's not just dance studio owners that are going to head into this room it is going to be dance teachers as well there's so many different mentors and we've some wonderful workshops and talks that are going to happen that are for everybody there's workshops and talks that are from wonderful amazing people that can hit the nail on the head for the teachers and the studio owners but it's the same talk but how you perceive and implement that information yeah which I'm excited about and I think the format this year means that 
even though kind of marketing social media is my jam, it's my main thing. I've also been a teacher for 30 years. I've been owner for 20 years. So I'm excited to get into the discussions and the presentations where I have personal experience that can help, you know, like yes. I think being able to tap into people in the room who have just been there before is really cool. Hey, awesome. Okay. Well, we will see you at ADF. Cool. See you there.